Welcome back, my friends, to another edition of TFT Hyperroll. Can you force it from Mission for Tuition? This one is going to revolve around Innovator Clockwork, as that build has been mentioned several times by people as one that they have used to climb. So I thought we would go through it. Before I do that, rather than ask for my usual like, share, and comment, which hopefully you're doing, I'm going to ask for something more. I am not one to self-promote while I'm playing. I, I, I don't like doing it. I don't know why. I just feel it's cheesy when I'm plugging my own channel. But if people who are not associated with the channel happen to mention in their lobbies that uh, there's a cool channel specifically for Hyperroll, I'd really appreciate that. It would help get the word out and help keep the channel and the series going. And with that said, let's get started. Right after we get through this first augment, and the Hextech one isn't going to be good, meditation could work, but probably Ascension's the best, just because the champions are going to get stronger as we're going. I want to go through what is involved in Innovator Clockwork. There are four key champions for your clockwork, that is Camille, Zillion, Oriana, and Jin. Those are the four clockwork champions. Now, two of those are four costs, so you're not worrying about them off the bat. Camille and Zillion are the ones you're looking for early. You want to fill in with your innovators, Ezreal, Singed, Echo, Seraphine, and ultimately Jace, when you find him, will either bring you to seven, because you found an innovator emblem or heart, or is going to replace Singed because he's just a far better tank. And again, depending how the game goes, if you've picked up Scrap Emblems, you may want to consider getting Jinx into the mix because she's a fantastic Scrap Champion. But we'll kind of see how it goes as we go along. I tend to find starting off with Innovator is a little bit better than starting off with Clockwork. I bring Clockwork in in round four so that I will then have the Innovator Clockwork. It's worked very well in this game, as you can see. Haven't lost a match yet as we head into the second augment. Nothing fantastic here. I will take the healing one, second win, and hope that I can stay up as long as possible. Your choices of carries and items are going to depend on what the game is doing. I tend to like to try to use Ezreal as my carry because it's very easy to usually shift him into something else. In this case, I had gotten a lot of Echoes early, so I started moving more towards Echo as the carry. So you're really going to have to decide in the moment which way is strongest. That's also going to change how I look about this last augment. With so many echoes and such a good chance at getting him up to three stars, given the options I had, I decide to go with high roller so that I can absolutely take echo up to three stars and make him the star of this show. This particular match, it took a really long time to find Jin, so it took forever to get to that fourth clockwork. But once we had the fourth clockwork, everyone was sped up and the team was gelling much better. I picked up a Zeri to ultimately enhance the sniper buff once we get to round nine. Now in an odd twist of fate, just as I was getting ready to go with the five innovators, four clockwork, two snipers, two scrap style build and see what it would do to take me to the end, the game said, hey, uh, Here's an innovator emblem for you. So that's going to change all my plans because I had a Jace locked at the bottom and that meant now I could go up to the seven innovators, which I'm going to do given the chance, which means Zeri comes out, I'm going to be losing my sniper buff on Jin, but I'm pretty sure this is a good trade for the dragon. Now I can show you this fight, but due to a technical error, I cannot show you how this one ultimately ended, I'll only be able to show you the result. As you can see, there's another team with a dragon out there. Luckily, I was able to power through it 
and survive. And that brought us into the top four. But shortly after this, OBS had a technical issue, stopped recording, so it didn't capture the end. What I can say is that we did come in second place, ultimately losing to the other team that had the dragon. And a two-star Jace. So, there really was no two ways about it, but a second place gave us 100 points. Game 2 started off pretty friendly, as I got a quick Ezreal and Camille, and then Luden's Echo, which is going to do really well on this type of team, because Ezreal does cast a lot. In the two games I've been forcing this comp, I do notice that it does seem to have a very strong start. That's not something I didn't already know about Innovator, but adding in the clockwork seems to extend it, as I feel like I'm consistently getting to the second augment without losing any matches along the way. For this game, our second augment choices are Stand United, Featherweights, and Keepers, because this build relies on so many ones and twos in it, I decide to go with Featherweights. I figure with Clockwork already speeding up my champions, giving additional speed to Camille, Ezreal, Zillion, and Singed is going to be helpful down the line. As we head into the third augment, the strategy seems to be working as we're holding top of the leaderboard. I have a tough choice here between the healing or the makeshift armor. I decide to go with makeshift armor because as I mentioned in an earlier video, makeshift armor counts on your summoned monster. So that bear is getting the benefit of the makeshift armor. The game took a sharp turn for the worst as I was looking to gold at least one of the champions that I was so close on, both Camille and Ezreal. Once I got Ezreal up to gold, I thought my worries were over. I finally had him strong enough to take out these teams. But then I run into a Syndicate Sniper team with a three-star Gold Ash, with a Rage Blade, Infinity Edge, and Last Whisperer. So all the makeshift armor in the world isn't going to help. Even though it looked good for a moment, my team is now in trouble. But this build does have some real strength to it, especially if you can get up to a 3-star Ezreal with the attack speed increases, and I put on the Rage Blade just as an addition, he is going to do a ton of damage to opposing teams, and he's able to keep us alive even against a fairly strong Yordle Enchanter team and bring us all the way into the top four. This game ultimately comes down to between me and that Syndicate Sniper team with the gold 3-star Ash. I probably should have fought a little bit harder and pulled out the Singed and put in the Jace to try to give it a real shot, but to be honest, at this point I pretty much knew which way this was headed because I have used that build against Innovator Scrap teams as I showed in a video before and destroyed with it. So. I was not expecting to win. Luckily, the other player was a good sport, and it was GGWP all the way around, and we have a second place finish. Time for game three, and it starts off with a lot of promise by giving us an early zillion, and then we get another shot with makeshift armor, which we pick up because, again, having makeshift armor will give your little Mr. Roboto that extra boost. Also, we want to try to get the innovators in first, so we're going to grab Singed and ultimately put them in. This game similarly stays very strong. As you can see, we're towards the top of the health charts as we're heading into the second set of augments. I've decided to put the Sunfire Cape onto Camille this time because she tends to be getting in people's faces, and I like that for this because it will set more people on fire. I was a little torn between weak spot and another batch of makeshift armor, but decided to go with the makeshift armor so that ultimately my little Mr. Roboto can be super, super strong. And also, I'm picking up Ezreal's like crazy, so while there's still a high chance of rolling ones, I'm going to do everything I can to hit that gold Ezreal early. The one problem is, I'm going to have to go into the next fight minus one champion. 
And rather than leave that on a cliffhanger, I'll just show this one at super speed, even one champion down with a cold Ezreal and an overall strong team, especially a super tanky Mr. Roboto, we were able to beat the next person. I'm starting to run into a champion problem with this match. First, we'll get through the augment. I go with the healing augment because that's gonna help, but I haven't been able to pick up my additional clockworks, no Orianas, no gens, and I only have a little bronze echo and a little bronze seraphine. So if I'm not able to solve that, it's going to be really hard to do innovator clockwork if I only have two clockworks. As we're towards the end of stage 8, the champion problem is just multiplying. Echo has not gotten up to two stars, nor has Oriana. We were really lucky with picking up an Ezreal early, but after that the luck ran out, and while we were able to two-star the Jin, we needed Oriana, we really needed Echo to go in and interrupt their backline, and all the makeshift armor in the world was not going to hold things back. Camille can hold stuff off for just so long, but ultimately it spelled demise, and sadly it put us down into fourth place, which is still good because it's positive LP. Grinding on into game four, the game did not give us a great start. No real innovators, no real clockwork. We go ahead and pick up the healing augment and then start looking for the champions that can fill this out. I could make do with Ziggs to start just because that would give me a little bit of scrap, but I'm hoping to find a zillion and Camille and there they are, so we're good to go. Again, you can see how strong the start is as we're at the top of the health charts heading into that second augment. The second augment, however, is uh, not really great for us. Uh, anything could kind of work, but I decide to go with the Jeweled Lotus just because I'm ultimately going to be picking up an Echo and I got an early Orianna, so having their spells have the ability to crit will be pretty good. This game, after giving me a lot of early Ezreals and what I thought was for sure going to be a gold, got really stingy really fast, but did end up giving me all four clockworks much earlier than expected, so much so that I have the four clockworks before I'm able to get to the five innovators. Then the game decided to give me the hardest choice I think I've ever had to make playing TFT. New recruit should seem like a no-brainer. But this is a chance to actually end up with six clockwork, something I'd never done before. So I decided to go that route, giving myself the full clockwork, which is the full amount of speed I can gain and hope that that will carry me to victory. Now, despite being really generous with the clockworks, this time it's being stingy with the innovators. I have not been able to get Seraphine or Jace, and that is making it very difficult to keep going. While I'm still at the top of the charts, I know that my team is just squishy enough without that bear out in front to go down fairly quickly. Luckily, we were able to find a Jace and get him into the team, so we were able to get into the top four, actually into the top three, but we didn't have that much really raw power on the team, just really, really, really fast attacks. I was hoping that the two-star Zeri with a Runin's Hurricane was going to carry it, but a Corky with that much damage was able to take us out, putting game four, into a third place, which is still decent. Heading into the final game, I don't get any good NPCs off the bat, and nothing amazing with the augment, so I decide to go with the healing one. I haven't been able to pick up a Zillion or a Camille yet, but I am going to go searching for them. At least I have a two-star Ezreal, but it's going to be a little bit difficult to get this going if I can't get my innovator start like I've been able to in the other matches. I've managed to two-star the Ezreal and the Singed, but I don't get the little Mr. Roboto this time. By the time we're heading into the second augment, we're getting pretty lucky. We've gotten a two-star zillion. We are holding up at the top of the health board. 
there is a tome of traits waiting for us and the next augment is exactly what you'd want for an innovator team. Self-repair will keep my little rubato up and then I still have that tome of traits to look at and I'm hoping to find, yep, an innovator emblem. So, so far we've gotten second, we've gotten third, we've gotten fourth. This time, it feels like it's going to be a first place finish, especially with all this going for us. Heading into the final augment, I have six innovators. I'm at the top of the health charts and I can pick up a healing augment, which can be really good for a team like this. I'm even able to get a gin so that I can go to the four clockwork. So now all I have to do is hold on till the end of the game and I'll have a four clockwork dragon. But just as I'm starting to count this as a first or second, I run into a team like this with a three-star VIP debonair talent who is able to rip my team apart through its healing, through the self-repair, and everything else, and just decimate me. But it's not just them. I go from that team to this team with a two-star Cho with the Spirit Visage, which means he is regaining health throughout the entire match. And even though this ends up as pretty much a 6v1, Cho does not want to die no matter what gets thrown at him and ultimately eats my gin. With only one life left, I transferred my items from Ezreal over to Jin. I had not been able to find a Jace, and so I find the best place to put the Shroud of Stillness to try to knock this team out, hoping that my Jin can really keep me in the game. But they were positioned absolutely perfectly for me, and were able to knock Jin out, who was now my strongest player. And again, all of the self-repair and healing in the world did not change the result. And what I thought was a sure first or second, I didn't even end up ever getting the dragon and fall to a disappointing sixth place. So with that, let's look at the scoreboard. Game one was second place. Then game two was second place. Game three was fourth place. Game four, we climbed back up to third place. And although I really, really thought we were gonna win, game five ended up with a disappointing sixth place. So we take two plus two plus four plus three plus six, divide that by five, and we end up with a four score of 3.4. This one looks pretty forcible to me in that you are going to climb even as you reach the higher levels. I seemed a lot more likely to end up between second and fourth place than I did outside of it. It took some really bad luck to end up with that sixth place finish, and also some really bad luck to not win in the first game when I had the dragon and the clockwork. I just ran into a bigger dragon. But overall, I think this is a really good build to use if your goal is to climb, and that includes even at the higher tiers. You might not be getting the first places a lot, so you might not climb quickly, but you will get there. The next video we're gonna do is gonna be Syndicate Sniper. We have more coming based on the suggestions left on the first video. Please leave more below if there is a build you would like to see forced and how it works out. I'll do my best to get them up as quickly as possible. Hope you enjoyed this video and have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.